So now that we know how supports work and how we can use islands and supports together, let's talk about auto supports. I'm gonna hold down shift and just drag over all those. I'm gonna go in here to auto. And if you click this down arrow under auto, you can see you can generate only where your islands are detected. You can generate just internal supports and you can do just ground supports. I'm gonna go ahead and just do all of them. I'm gonna set this to medium. So with the skull selected medium, say generate, generate automatic supports. And it's gonna say it's adding supports or it's detecting islands, adding your supports, optimizing by parenting and then adding bracing. So now that you know all about supports, auto supports should look pretty reasonable as far as what they are, what it's doing. Uh, and how you create them and how you edit them. So if we go through here and we clip through our model, first thing you're gonna notice is, well, first thing I'm noticing is that there's internal supports already set up for you. So it's gone through and detect the islands and added supports for you. Now, knowing about how things need to be supported and where your strength needs to go, you know, as it's, you know, sticking to the FEP as it's printing out. And again, this is where it's going to start. So here's your build plate at the very, very bottom and it's gonna print this this large collection of bases out first and then it's gonna start printing our supports and then boom, it's gonna attach uh, to the back of the head. And if you know that these things are gonna to have to be pretty heavy duty in order to support this area, what you can do is you can go through here and select these supports. You can switch, switch them from medium to heavy, you know, and feel free to do that. And of course, now that you know how supports work again, you can go through here and you can delete supports that you don't think you'll need or modify any supports to light, medium and heavy as you see fit. And in fact, like all of these in here, if you think this one can be light, you can switch it over here to light. If you think this one could just be, I don't know, mini supports. Remember, you can always go back in here in the manual and have parent and bracing options. But you can always go in here and say, okay, hit delete off that one and then control alt and add a mini support through here instead of full support if you want. Now back here on these bases, you can print this out just fine. You can just print them out as is. One thing you can do though, is you can go over here. So we've talked about supports. We're going to go down here to raft. And these are gonna be all your raft options. So right now it's set to none. So we can go through here, we can do a cylinder, cube, and I'm on the pro version, but some of these should be available to you in just the regular version. So for instance, it's gonna replace those bases with a grid. And again, this is your build plate. So you're gonna to wanna to have to, you're gonna to have to scrape this off. So you can go through here, you can do an optimized pattern here. So to go through and just connect all of your bases, then you have a raft that'll just take the shape of your object and make sure that that's all supported. And then you can do a little raft with a little lip or a shape wall, and that'll allow you to print a raft. So all your bases are connected. And then when you go to scrape this off of your build plate, you can get a get underneath that lip and go through there and try and peel all of these off. So again, while we're printing, it's going to start here at the bottom at the bottom and it's gonna print this raft out first. So it's gonna print this raft shape here, and then as it goes up, it'll start printing your supports. Another thing to notice while we're talking about this, if we go back here to your resin settings, so just click down there in the lower left and go in here to edit, you're gonna see normal layers and you're gonna see burn-in layers. Those are your bottom layers. And these ones are usually set to higher exposure time. So for the bottom layers, and it'll say the number. So for the first three layers it prints, it's going to set that exposure time for 20 seconds. And that's gonna sit there for 20 seconds and really cure that resin. Uh, so it's very, very, very hard and stuck to your build plate. And then after that, it's gonna do normal layers. And you see this one's, set, this one's set to two seconds. So instead of 20, it's gonna expose for two seconds. So it's gonna print a little bit faster. And since it's not curing as long, it won't be as prone to sticking to the FEP. And the reason why it's okay for this big broad area to be printed out first, you may be thinking like, well, wouldn't that just peel off the build plate? Well, it's gonna print out this really broad area and it's gonna really, really adhere to the build plate. And then as you go up, these are only gonna be exposed for two seconds at a time. So they'll stick to the, the FEP plastic as it's dipping back down into the resin. So it'll stick, 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 and then you'll start getting these broader areas, but they're not super broad. And since we hollowed them out, it's not a big deal. And as this is printing out, it needs to pull back from the build plate from the FEP as it's printing all these out, everything's being supported and it's printing all these supports out. So when it hits these other areas later on, all of a sudden the front of the face starts coming in, all of those are ready to be supported because you've been printing these supports the entire time. And then the front of the face starts getting printed and it starts getting sticky to the FEP with all these broad white areas, no problem. You've already got supports there ready to help out. And then you're done. And then ideally everything will be stuck to the build plate. You've got this beautiful thing and then you just need to snap these supports off.
And that is the basics of the prepare section in here. Now it can get a little bit jumbled in here. So you see if I go to the bottom, um, it, it will turn off your raft automatically, which is nice, but it's still a lot to look at. You can go in here to visibility. So you can say, I just want to look at the tips and the bases. So here's the base and the tips, or I just want to look at the tips or the tips in the middle or just the contact points where my supports are going to touch my model. And of course you can go back here to all. For the jaw, let's go ahead and do this one real quick. I'm going to select it, go back here to support. We'll choose medium, generate automatic supports. Say okay, we can go in here to raft. We can choose our raft with the wall. And if you ever decide you don't like the raft, you may think like, oh, can I just select the raft? I'm in raft, what, what can I do? You have to select the object. So for example, the skull, and then you just turn it off by just clicking no, no raft. However, while you're in here, also look that you have a lot of settings for every one of these. Well, not every one, but quite a few settings for all of these raft options available to you.